Okay, so this is my fourth time trying to record this thing. I'm a bit out of practice since the end of the pandemic. But we were looking at question 11 today in class and a student approached it from a different perspective. Um, and we just kind of now want to take a look at that perspective as well, that different way of dealing with this question. So there was kind of a slightly different approach used um, to get the centre of the circle. So these are our two lines here. Um, and... Um, yeah, so we have this line here and this line here, and we note quickly that the slope of this line here is going to be um, minus, um, minus 2 over 3. Okay, so that's going to be important for us. So we have minus 2 over 3 as our slope, and we know that it intersects the y-axis up here. We did all this work earlier, and we know that this line down here, and there's a circle in between, and that's all good. So we then came along in class, and we decided, well, we would construct a line that goes halfway so the job was to find the center of this circle here because once we found the center it's going to be really easy to get the equation of the circle so in order to get the center of this we kind of constructed a line that went this way through the center and we kind of realized that would also go halfway through the midpoint of these two points here and we also discovered that um, that we could find where exactly on this line the center is by constructing another line going this way. Okay, and where those two lines intersect, that will be um, the, the center of our circle. So this line here is parallel to this line, and this line here is perpendicular to this line, okay? Okay, and we know that the coordinates of this point here, because we have 0, 2, and 0, minus 8, the coordinates of that point are... Um, 0 comma minus 3, isn't it? Okay, so let's work out the equation of this guy here first of all, and this is where this approach differs from the approach that we used in class. So we're going to go with y is equal to mx plus c. So that's the formula we're going to use, and we can use this formula here because we have y-intercepts. Okay, so this, these y-intercepts, they refer to this value of c. So that's all very useful for us. So this is a very particular this is a very particular um, instance where we would find the equation of a line using this formula. We don't usually do that. Usually if we're asked to find the equation of the line, we use y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. But in this instance, this one here makes sense because we actually know the coordinates of the y-intercepts of the lines. So let's use this formula. Um, and we're going to call this first line, let's call it line star, and y therefore will equal to the slope of this line, which is minus 2 over 3, x plus minus 3. So minus 3 here being this minus 3, where the line crosses the y-axis. So tidying star up, we get y is equal to minus 2 over 3x, minus 3. So that's star. Let's take a look at the equation of this line here. Next. So we know that this line is perpendicular to this line. So therefore the slope of this line must be the slope of this line turned upside down and its sign changed. So um, let's call this line here star star. So it's going to be y in this case is going to equal to 3 over 2 times x and it's plus 2 this time, so we're good. So we have two equations, and we have two variables, so we can now use simultaneous equations to find out where these two lines intersect. Um, right, and where they intersect will obviously be the centre. Now, so there's a number of ways of doing this. We could line them on top of each other, and we could add them together now. So we could put a line here, and if we subtract the bottom line from the top line or something like that, it will work out for us. But probably the easiest thing to do at this stage is to spot that y here equals this thing, and y here equals this thing. So if y equals this thing and y equals this thing, a really nice approach is to say that um, using our kind of um, Batman and Bruce Wayne identity, so um, if, if Batman is the only person in the room and Bruce Wayne is the only person in the room, well then, um, Batman must be the same person as Bruce Wayne, right? So we can say that um, 
minus 2 over 3x minus 3 must equal to minus 3 over 2x um, plus 2. So this thing here must equal this thing here because these two things are equal. Um, and then we can do some algebra on this. Um, I could multiply everything by 6. That's probably the nicest thing to do here at this stage. So multiplying the first thing by 6 will give me um, minus 4x. Multiplying this thing here by 6 gives me minus 18. Multiplying this thing here by 6 will give me um, minus 9x. Multiplying this thing here by 6 will give me 12. Um, sorry, just to show you what I did to jump from here to here, I um, multiplied it by 6. Um, times six. Times six. I do everything I can to avoid using that um, cross symbol for the multiply. Okay. Um, so now we're dealing with whole numbers, much easier to deal with, and we can now go with um, minus four x plus nine x is equal to um, twelve plus eighteen. So we have. Oh, have I gone wrong here? Hmm. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's a plus there. Sorry, that's a plus. So I was reading this minus, but that's not actually a minus. I just put that in for illustrative purposes earlier. So therefore, that's a plus, and therefore, that is a negative. Sorry. Um, I'm not going to restart again because that will be five attempts, so I'm going to leave it like that. Um, yeah, it's not great when something is being explained to you and the explainer makes a mistake, but um, yeah. So just be aware that the mistake was that y, positive version of y, i.e. the same thing as this, equals 3 over 2x plus 2. Okay, so it's it's positive, positive, positive. Um, so everything is okay now again, and we end up with minus 13x is equal to 30. So therefore, x is equal to 30 over negative 13, or kind of um, betterly, if that is a word, minus 30 over 13. Okay, and then to find the corresponding value of y, we would go with, um, let's pick one of these things here. So minus 2 over 3, let's deal with star m times x, which is minus 30 over 13, um, plus negative 3. So that just gets bashed into a calculator, and we get um, minus 2 over 3, so minus 30 over 13, Ooh. Um, plus start bracket negative 3, equals minus 19 over 13. And we therefore have um, the location of the center, which is at um, minus 30 over 13, comma minus 19 over 13. And yeah, so that all um, kind of checks out. And we now have the center point. So we now need to work out the distance from there to there. And we can do that using our um, formula for length. So we can go with um, from zero to two, and let's call that x1 y1, x2, y2. Um, so I can now go with um, minus 30 over 13, um, minus zero squared plus um, minus 19 over 13, minus two squared. And so the radius is equal to um, the square root of start bracket minus 30 over 13, minus zero <laughs> squared um, plus start bracket fraction minus 19 over 13 um, minus two squared, which is equal to 15 root 13 all over 13. I think this is kind of where we were going with our notes earlier. Um, so this is kind of the numbers that we ended up with in class. And then it's just so, just so I don't have to change my page I'm going to do it down this little corner here again, very bad. I'm so out of habit of making videos. Um, but it is, um, where are we going? We are now going with our x minus h 
squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared formula. So this is going to be our h, this is going to be our k, and this is going to be our r. So we have x um, plus 30 over 13 squared plus y um, plus 19 over 13 squared is equal to 15 root 13 over 13 squared. And then to get full marks for the question, you'll need to rewrite all of this part here again and then say it's equal to um, that thing there squared, which is 225 over 13. So that's your answer x plus 30 over 13 squared plus y plus 19 over 13 squared equals this thing here. So in order to get full marks for the question, they will expect you to evaluate the square. Okay, they, 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 you're okay to leave these things alone, but you really should um, square that out. Um, right, so the crucial thing was you ended up with this equation and you will end up with this equation. And then you can then spot that um, these things here must also equal one another. And that then gets you a value for x.